Hey everybody, fellow makers and prop tarts. Welcome to Prop Live Q&A, your weekly prop and costume making Q&A session, or sometimes weekly. Uh, today is a day like uh, like most of them. We're going to answer your prop and costume making questions, and we have a wonderful guest. Without further ado, welcome to the show, Steph from the Antilily. Hello! Hello! Uh, Steph with the uh, being creeped on by, is that Daedric armor behind you? Mm. I wake up to it every morning. It's every great. morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I it's got... a good scarf rack, actually. Oh, yeah, look at that. Holds my scarf. <laughs> um, I was excited uh, to chat with you because I think somehow, while I thought it was not possible, you are way more of a Skyrim fan than I am. <laughs> Like, Absolutely. you've definitely made more things from Skyrim than I have. I've got your um, Instagram <laughs> feed up on the uh, uh, up on the screen right now. Is that a Daedric axe that you're working on? Yes, I finished it, actually. Oh, and it's Damn. all done. Yeah. Where? Is it, it, hang on. And is that all foam? Yep. Oh, look at it. Holy crap. It's so nice. That is Listen. Awesome. Are those yep. are those googly eye rivets? Yep. <laughs> it's so cool. That's awesome. It's so light too. I never make light things. All of my original Skyrim props are all heavy. Oh yeah. But this one's light, and it's 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 a nice change. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nice when you got to carry that thing around at convention all day. Um, I also uh, am stoked to see the Skyrim steel armor that um, I made that a, a year or two ago, and. Uh, yours looks awesome. Very well done. Thank you. Lots more Skyrim. Um, okay, I'll have to ask. Was about what was that? Four years ago now. Sorry, my, my armor is about four years ago yeah. now, so it's a bit dustier. <laughs> You're making making the steel armor back bef before it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, along with a bunch of other really cool stuff, uh, like... Um, Aloy here, or is it? Is it? It's. I know it's a Horizon Zero Dawn costume. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's yeah, it's a background NPC. Yeah, it's one of the Nora Braves. I found them cool. Yeah, they're they are really really amazing. I think um, as far as games with really good, really unique original artwork, I think Horizon Zero Dawn kind of has that in spades. It's fantastic mm. stuff. Um. Well, uh, is the uh, is the the Daedric Axe area, your most recent thing that you finished, or do you have anything awesome that you're working on right now? Uh, no, I'm not working on anything at the moment. I'm still trying to decide if I want to commit to it. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to do the Dawnguard armor for years. Oh, that's awesome. But I want to do it as real as I can, mm -hmm. minus the metal. It's yeah. It's going to be Warbler instead of metal, but all leather, um, all hand stitched. So I just uh, I don't know if I want to commit to it yet because it's going to be expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that was a really fun expansion. Welcome. <laughs> Hope everyone's ready to to talk about uh, Skyrim for the next hour. <laughs> uh, something else I saw too in your feed that that I was really excited about is uh, giant axe. Is that gore howl that you made? Yeah. So I made that for um, the workshop that I did over in New Zealand last year. Yeah. Uh, it was probably around this time last year, actually. I did it on Easter weekend. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I made that for a school called Skill Tree up in um, Hamilton in New Zealand, which was pretty fun to do. Um, it's pretty big. I don't actually have it here. I left it there. Yeah. So that Mike could paint it up for me. And it looks so pretty up on the wall. Oh, uh, so it, it did get finished then? <laughs> it did get finished, yes. Oh, that's really I saw cool. it in a sneaky live stream up the back. I'm like, yeah. hey, you finished. <laughs> <laughs> that is really, really cool. That's one of my favorite uh, favorite weapons from World of Warcraft is uh, Gore Howl. So cool. Admittedly, not a World of Warcraft person, but that's all. Yeah. You don't you have to. Make you don't have to play World of Warcraft <laughs> to uh, to appreciate a weapon of that gravitas. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, well, cool. Everyone watching live, of course, you can go find Steph's work uh, all over the internet. We'll have links to everything uh, below, but Instagram.com slash the underscore antilily. You can go check that out. I'll drop a link in the chat for you guys. So go on over there and follow what she's working on. Um, 
And uh, in a moment here, we're going to start tackling some of your prop and costume making questions. Uh, of course, if you're watching mm-hmm. live, punishprops.com slash live to submit your questions. Um, people who are also in the chat are also excited about bake- making and baking. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Because I believe I saw uh, where to go. I believe I saw a uh, a gingerbread house. Was it every year? Yeah, that's that's my yearly thing. Is, is to just go nuts with gingerbread. And it's uh, is this a, a specific building? It looks familiar. The Hang on. I'm too scared that my connection is going to drop out if I open Twitch. But oh. It's the gingerbread med- meduseld, meduseld, meduseld. Yeah, that was the um, uh, the building in Rohan. Oh yes, in the Lord of the Rings. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and was it delicious? Ah, oh. you know, I was actually so sick of looking at gingerbread that I didn't eat any of that. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very cool. Um, well. We've got some questions sent in, and we got people sending some more questions in. We'll get to those in just a minute. Uh, before we dive into those, I'd like to take a moment and check in with the prop tarts on our on the prop tart page. Uh, people like to share the stuff they're working on over there. We are forty five hundred members strong now, so thank you guys Ooh. for having being such an awesome uh, community. Uh, someone here is uh, working on giant uh, dagger from another world of warcraft thing let's see what are some other things that people are working on uh we got a costume i don't oh it's from uh star wars we got a star wars costume lots of really great stuff over there it looks like a lot of people um have been working on projects and posting questions and getting tons of really good feedback which i always find really fantastic so if you haven't already, uh, head on over to the Prop Tarts of Punish Props on Facebook. Of course, we'll have a link down below. You can go join in on the fun. Um, one more thing before we get started on the questions. Let me see here. I have been working with Tested, which is why originally we had to reschedule our Q&A with the ever-so-patient Steph. So thank you for being patient with us. Um that's going to be the best excuse to cancel a stream, though. Yeah. Ugh. Well, all right. I'm I'll so dive jealous. I'll dive in a, a quick explanation. Um, I planned a trip to go to Tested for two days, so Wednesday and a Thursday. And I was like, oh, crap. I gotta. We have to push the, the Q&A back a day. So we were going to have it on Friday. But when I got to Tested, they were like, hey, if you stay a day later, you can do a build with Adam Savage. And I was like, oh, I, I have to do that. <laughs> So that's why we had to reschedule. Uh, so I appreciate you being flexible so that I could play in the shop with one of my heroes. So that was awesome. Not a problem anytime. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, there's a couple of videos up on Tested, and uh, we shot a bunch for their premium uh, channel. So if you go to uh, tested.com slash premium, they have a bunch of videos over there. It's like 40 bucks a year, I think, for their premium thing. I think it's worth it. I'm a little bit biased. But I also pay the forty bucks a year, so I can get posters from Adam. Uh, two videos. Yes. Ju- did you get the? Um, did you get the Hand of Doom or the uh, the uh, Hellboy poster? Yeah, I have it framed and in my kitchen. <laughs> Do you have it? <laughs> so good. Yep. Awesome. It's framed. I just haven't got a spot yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's waiting. big. Yeah, it's a big, a big enough thing where you, um, you, you sort of plan a whole room around it. Uh, anyway, if you head on over to their premium uh, page, there are two videos up there right now. Uh, Norm and I put together a foam helmet kit that I built. In fact, if you are a subscriber to Quarterly, the box that Adam is curating this year would have come with that foam helmet kit that I designed. So that's kind of those that were sent out this week. So anyone who is uh, subscribed to that will be getting a little something designed by me, which is pretty cool. Uh, anyway, I think that's all I had. Was there anything you, any projects or any cool things you have coming up that you want to chat about or should we dive into questions? Uh, I got nothing. All right. Let's jump right (laughs) into the questions. 
Let's grab one here. Okay, uh, Brittany, because uh, she has access to the dock and can do what she wants, has put a question at the top from her. <laughs> she is curious, uh, what was it that made you want to build things specifically from Skyrim? Ugh. I think I started trying to cosplay before Skyrim came out, but as soon as Skyrim did come out, I'm like, oh, I have to make everything. Yeah. I I, oh, I don't know what it was. Just like it's kind of like what Adam Savage said in one of his um I think it was a, t- a TED talk or an interview sometime where he's like you you covet something so much in a game you just want to bring it to life mm-hmm. and the only way to do that is to do it yourself. Right, like you um, unless someone company's already made. Right, right. It's you just stare at you like I need that in my life, and you look and you're like. Yep. Where can I buy it? And people are like, well, it doesn't yeah. exist. And you're like, I'm going to have to make it myself. And then you... Yep, rolling it around in the screen's not good enough. Nope, not good enough. <laughs> uh, Brittany is also curious. She says, it looks like you have pets. She's curious what type of pets you have and what their names are. So, I have one myself. I have a lizard. He's behind me. Yeah? He's kind of back there. Just chilling. His name is Sausage. He's very angry. It just and he hates everyone. He's just always angry. Yeah, he's not lovable. No, <laughs> but I love him. I lost my love upon him. And I, <laughs> I, I have a picture up on the screen uh, where you have him uh, in a piece of bread, like a proper sausage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except for the tomato sauce, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, let Sausage know that we all think he's really cool. Yes. There's also some horses out the back, which oh. I'd love to make arms for one day, but they don't look like medieval horses. They look no. very modern day horses. Oh. One looks like a cow. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, Brittany, for the, the questions. Let's move on here. Uh, Travis wants to know. Uh, he's trying to sand some seams on a foam helmet with his Dremel. But the sanding bit kept wanting to pull at the foam. He's curious uh, what sort of bits you might want to use. Do you have any favorite Dremel bits? Um, I love my sanding drum. Mm-hmm. Some of, one of the, the green stone grinder. Oh, yeah. Is also pretty good. Um, I've got a couple of cheap ones from work, uh, which I use. It's like pink or green. I don't know what the difference is between them. I just use them on foam. <laughs> yeah. Um, a couple of the, the more heavier duty ones to eat away at the foam, like the wood carving bits work pretty well. Um, but other than that, I just love using the, the bit of sandpaper stuck onto a paint mixing stick. Yeah. That works for me a lot. That's a, that's a pretty that's good... Uh, I've I've found myself even though I have every sanding tool you can buy, I still find myself making my own for, for specific purposes, just gluing sandpaper to, to sticks and, and dowels and stuff. Um, if you do, if uh, folks at home go, uh, usually what I do is go to Dremel's website and just look at all the different bits they have. I'll have a link to this in the in the show notes. Um, but a sanding drum, you can get like a 60 grit sanding drum. And if you use that on your rotary tool, that's going to like really rip away at the, the foam. But you can get like a 120 or a 240 grit. You can get higher grit sanding drums. Um, I'm trying to find, I, I've got the, the thing up here. I'm trying to find um, that stone bit that you were talking about. Because I like the stone bits a lot too. Um, but yeah, anyway, you, folks can go check out the uh, their website. Um for all the bits, all the ones that you know that you want to buy. Uh, I personally use the stone bits a lot on foam because it's a lot less aggressive. Let me see here. Put that link in the show notes. Uh, thank you, Travis, and good luck with your foam sanding. Let's grab another one from Jonathan. And he's curious about the Nazgul gauntlet that I made. Hold on, it's right behind me. Oh. There it is. More foam, of course. Ta-da. Uh, he said, what was the base glove that you used uh, for the Nazgul gauntlet? Um, Steph, when you're making gloves, do you usually purchase a glove? Like, there's a purchased glove under here. Is that, Or are you the kind of person <laughs> that makes their own glove from scratch? 
Um, I've purchased a glove once. That's when I did the Daedric armor. I've got these little claws that go over the top of the gloves to kind of cut off the circulation of my fingers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I've recently made a few pairs of my own gloves for other costumes. So I think I'm a maker of them yeah. now. I'm, that's something mm. I'm gonna. I've never tried to make gloves from scratch, so uh, someday I'll have to give that a try. I know that it's one of those things where I know the first try, the first time I try, is gonna not be good. Like it won't fit <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, for this one, this was not even purchased. This is one of Adam Savage's welding gloves. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> "We need a glove. Uh, this one, go." So that it's already it's pre-distressed. It's already beat up, and, and the other one, the right hand, there's a hole, and my thumb is sticking out of it. But it looks the part. So it's just a, it's just a leather glove that was used for welding, I guess. So there you go. Free with it. Yeah. I've used purchased leather gloves in the past that were brand new um, and weathered them myself. So uh, I like to go to hardware stores. Uh, the, the, um, the glove section in hardware stores is really cool, and a lot of... If you need something to look sci-fi, a lot of companies are making tools and stuff that look sci-fi now, so they they look fine. Mm. I actually yeah. work. Um, I work for Bunnings, which yeah. is our local hardware store. Mm-hmm. I work in the tool shop, so I get to play with all of that stuff all the time. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. That one. Some came... of the uh, something just, some of the knee. Sorry, some of the knee pads that they've just brought out lately look like. Um, Shoulder armor straight from Destiny. Oh yeah, <laughs> or um, crazy, or um, motocross armor, or paintball yep. armor looks sci-fi now. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Very. Uh, thank you, Jonathan. Good question. We've got another one here from David. Uh, he's curious about Doctor Who. Now I don't. I've never watched Doctor Who, so I don't know anything about it. But he wants to know if there's any good resources for Doctor Who themed props. Steph, do you know anything about Doctor Who? Because I don't. Uh, I've seen some pop up on Instagram, but I can't recall who the makers are. Mm-hmm. I, I've only watched about halfway through the Matt Smith series, to be honest. Don't hate me. Yeah, I, I've never <laughs> watched any of them. <laughs> I know I'm a bad nerd, everybody. I know I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I can tell you that Doctor Who stuff is super, super popular on the RPF. So if you head to the Replica Prop Forum and look up Doctor Who stuff. Um, I've seen... Um, actually, let me see if I can find this video. My buddy Matt is way into it. Matt Munson. And his buddy Ewan, I think... Um, like went crazy to make remake the one of the jackets i think including going to the manufacturer of the fabric who made it for the show to get his so that his jacket would be like identical so there are there are people out there who are way into this um uh, i just have to do a tiny bit of research <laughs> uh, it was project work bench and then it was doctor who let's see let's see if i can find this uh, there's Matt's thing, and let's search for, um, jacket, maybe? Nope, nope, nope. I don't know. I'm gonna have to dig a bit. Oh, here we go. I found it. Okay, so I'll link to this video in the chat and in the show notes, but this is Matt on the right and you and on the left, and, uh, they talk about recreating the perfect Doctor Who costume. Uh, so that video might help. And also if you can get a hold of them, that might help too. So there you go. (laughs) I don't know anything about Dr. Who, but I know someone who does. (laughs) Uh, all right, cool. Uh, good luck with that one. That was from David. Uh, hopefully he stumbles on the, a big old community that's way into doing that. You know they're out there. All right, Milton has a question. He's curious about uh, molding, um, uh, specifically a brush on mold. Okay, after brushing on your mold material, so I would guess something like silicone, is there a way to clean the brushes or should one have a large supply of disposable brushes? I bet that uh, working at Bunnings, you probably have lots of disposable brushes. Do you go through a lot of 
brushes, <laughs> like chip brushes and stuff. I've oh, I've never done a brush on mold before. I've okay. only done like a two part four. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't. Mm, some of the brushes at Bunnings, so the bristles all fall out. I'd be scared they'd get in the mold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We have uh, acid brushes, which are like the smaller, thinner uh, brushes. Uh, They are cheap. The bristles do fall out. So if that's a concern, I will super glue the bristles together. Uh, But yeah, they're one-time use. Once you brush them and they get silicone on them, you just throw them away. But a pack of 100 is like $5. (laughs) Uh, And then chip brushes are similar. They're just bigger, wider ones. Um, And uh, yeah, you just use it once and throw it away. So consumables. It's all part of the, the process. Um, I wish we had bulk packs of stuff. Yeah, it, it, it's something I learned when I was uh, when I visited New Zealand. Uh, when I'm like, oh, why don't you just go to the store and buy 800 brushes? And they're like, there aren't that many brushes in the country. I was like, oh, that's right. <laughs> I forgot about that. It'll probably cost us eight hundred dollars to buy 800 brushes. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Um. Cool. Let's move on here. Thank you, Milton, for the question. Z has a, a really good question. What is the best way to start a cosplay using an original character? That's something that um, you don't see a lot of. I think a lot of people get into cosplay to portray their favorite character. But occasionally you see people popping up making their own characters from scratch, which I think is kind of cool. Especially like in the uh, in the steampunk community. Uh, is that something you've ever dove into? Trying to do something that's an original design? thought about it but they're all kind of based off a game or a movie right. anyway so i don't really class it as my own originality it's more just my spin off something yeah um but not... i would just say do a lot of drawings yeah so many drawings that's a really good idea um especially because you're making a costume you can change the design to make it more comfortable or easier to pee in like you have that you have all the flexibility <laughs> in the world <laughs> Um, so that's why I like the idea of spending a lot of time on design. That's a good good call. Um, if you were going to do... I have a good one question for you, Steph. If you were going to make a, either an original character or um, your take on a character, what type of character would that be or which character would you modify and how? Well, uh, definitely the a mage from Skyrim, like a battle yeah. mage. Yeah. The kind of character that I, I usually play. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to do the, um, like the apprentice robes or something, but jazz it up with a bit of, you know, metal armor. Oh, you're speaking my language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is something I will do one day. I'm currently, I do have some mage robe patterns in the works. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I say in the works, it's like, up to two years the work <laughs> i'm not seamstress um, it's it's gonna happen and I've, i'm really looking forward to be able to mash up my own design from that kind of universe it's such a beautiful universe <laughs> that sounds really great um that's one of the reasons why i liked the mage from dragon age 2 his he was a mage but he still had like a like a armored gauntlet and his wizard staff was also a spear so if the spell doesn't work he could just poke him in the face pretty awesome (laughs) that's cool well i'm excited i hope that in the next within the next three years we get to see you make that that sounds really cool yeah yeah um we've done i'll have the gray hair to go with it yeah by by then (laughs) (laughs) uh we've done some stuff like that we we had a local steampunk convention which is really fun and uh, uh we did some more original type characters uh, but for now, the next few costumes I want to do, I think, are are uh, kind of like like I'm doing. Like I have my my um, tank trooper helmet behind me there. It's the tank trooper from Rogue One, but it's kind of a stylized version of it. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm into right now. Let's see. Thank you, Z. That was a great question. Got a few more coming in. Uh, let's see here, Dave. Oh, Dave is curious about the show Mystery Science Theater 3000. Is that a show that you have watched? Are you into? No? MST3K? I don't even know what that is. Uh, He's curious if I've ever made a prop (laughs) from MST3K. I have not. 
So, uh, no. <laughs> but if I did make something, I'd probably make a Tom Servo because Tom Servo is awesome. Uh, and I believe there are plenty of tutorials online. If you want to figure out all the things you need to make that specific robot, then you can go look that up. I am not planning on doing it, though. This is not me. This is not me committing to that. I just want the internet to know I'm not committing to building. <laughs> I know how that works. If I say it out loud on the internet, people will, will harp on me for the next two years, expecting it to be done. Yep. <laughs> Um, Avatar in the chat is curious if that show is still airing. Um, I know they made a new run of it, uh, but I don't know if they're making it anymore. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Uh, Blitz Attract says making Crow or Tom Servo would be cool. Well, Blitz Attract, you should make Crow. And since you set it online on the internet, you have to do it. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Thank you, Dave. Zach is curious because it is, of course, tomorrow where you live. Curious what it's like living in the future. <laughs> oh. Is everything awesome? Is, have the robots taken over? <laughs> the weather can't decide what it wants to do. No. One day it's raining and the next hour it's bright and sunny and then it's muggy and ugh. I will say, though. Dress for all occasions. Because you guys are a day ahead of us, do you get to see movies like 12 hours before us? I wonder if that works that way. Um, no, I'm not sure that it does. I think it's, I can't be sure, but I think Australia has separate release dates to yeah. you guys. Where they kind of try to match it up a little bit. Yeah, that would be, that would be a cool feature. I don't know if that's the case, though. Um, <laughs> the future is bright, Zach. The future is bright and yes. raining very, at, the, at the same time. <laughs> very bright. Um, Brittany yeah. dropped a, a question in the in the notes for us here. She's curious if you ever, um, w while working at Bunnings at a hardware store, if you ever get cosplayers in there looking to buy stuff for their costumes. Um, they never approach you directly and say, hi, I'm making a costume. Yeah. They're always really super shy. They're like, oh, did you have this sanding bit? And do you have this glue? And I'm like, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm on to you. Anyway, like, what are you making? I want to know. <laughs> and they, they're kind of shy to talk to you about it. And I'm like, I am one of you. <laughs> Please talk to me. I have no one. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm the same way, though. When I go to the hardware store, I'll put a bunch of stuff up on the thing, and they start ringing it up, and they look at me weird, because they're like, none of this will work together. And I'm like, it's for a space. It doesn't matter. Just ring me up, please. I don't want to talk. <laughs> and then they try to put their own suggestion in, and it yeah. totally won't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then what What else are you going to do when you go to the hardware store? And someone's like, hey, can I help you? And you're like, ah, I'm making... A war axe from Skyrim, and I'm trying to pick out the right PVC pipe for the handle. Which one do you think will work? Place. And they're like, "Yeah, they're." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for the question, Brittany. That's a good one. Hey, Kishore, my buddy Kishore left a, a question in here. Kishore is a science guy over at Tested. Uh, he's curious, when do you know when a costume is finished, or is it fin just finished enough to wear to a convention? Um, he gets caught in the endless cycle of never quite being done. So when do you decide when a costume is done? Is it because the convention's tomorrow and you have to put it on? <laughs> <laughs> because the convention has already started, yeah. that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I can never finish anything on time. I don't think I've ever gotten a full night's sleep before a convention. Yeah, I'm Not sure. Ever. I'm sure. Just There's about... so much compromise in the last twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, I'm sure most of the people mm. in the chat can sympathize with that, uh, and I certainly can. Um, one of my favorite quotes is about movies: that movies are never released; they escape. <laughs> just means. <laughs> They're when they're they're done when they have to be done and uh, and and then you'll uh, then you got to wear it. I think just about every costume I've worn while I'm wearing it, I'm like, boy, there's so much more I could have done, but here we are now. So yeah, costumes are never finished; they escape. Um, although I will say, most for me, like if I get it to ninety five percent, I'm pretty happy with it. But my my ninety five percent is probably different than other people's ninety five percent. That's fine. I hope Kishore finishes his costume, I believe, for Dragon Con. 
he's got some ambitious plans. And if you guys ran into Mayor McCheese at Dragon Con last year, that's our bu- our buddy Kishore. <laughs> he was uh, dressed as Mayor McCheese and he was giving out cheeseburgers, which is incredible. Thanks, Kishore. Let's move another one. Uh, move to another question here. Corey M9 is curious about gingerbread. He wants to compare and contrast making gingerbread houses with prop making. Does the fact that it will get eaten make a difference? <laughs> how much designing goes... Uh, uh, how much does designing... Uh, I'm not quite sure what he's trying to ask there. Anyway. Uh, gingerbread. How is it the same and how is it different from prop making? Um. Uh- the construction stage of it is actually more like woodworking. Yeah. Um, which is another hobby of mine. But by the time you come to decorating it, then it's like prop making. It's like you can just you you know how to do stuff. Some of your skills just translate into that, especially when you glue the pieces together. That's exactly how you'd paint on the um, the contact adhesive, and you wait a little bit, and then you'd stick it together. Mm-hmm. Um, gosh, it just takes so much time. <laughs> it's so fun though. Uh, let's see. He had another question. He's curious. What's that thing with the that looks like a glue gun with a drill battery? Uh, I I think that is a nail gun. Uh, it's talking about putting the base of the uh, gingerbread house together. A giant orange and black tool. Is that a nail gun? Oh, in a, I remember that picture. Yeah, it is a nail gun. <laughs> so, what did you build the base? Is it then a wooden base? then with uh, yeah it's yeah. a it's a timber it's a piece of mdf on the bottom and it, it's uh, just to make it up a little bit i've put like a little platform um oh yeah there it is i see it now mm-hmm. i've had to open twitch on my phone otherwise yeah. my connection's okay. crappy um yeah that's just a um a timber platform nailed down to that big mdf piece down the bottom and covered in foil there you go that's it and that and that's <laughs> but that's a battery powered nail gun that's awesome yeah Oh, We've been man. selling them for a few years now. Get with the times. I know. I my <laughs> my nail gun is air powered like a caveman. It's terrible. <laughs> um, Corey M nine is also pointing out that you have uh, a Ryobi super glue gun or maybe a hot glue gun. Yeah. Oh my goodness, man. Do they I'm... have Do they have Ryobi in the U.S.? Yeah, it's. Um, I've seen a battery battery powered hot glue gun in the hardware store, and I've been very tempted to buy it. But I already yeah. own like three hot glue guns, and they all still work. So I have a yeah. hard time. Well, just this one it pumps out a lot of glue oh, all man. at once, so you don't have to worry about your glue drying before you put the whole lot on. But um, I actually brought that thing to New Zealand with me last year, and they didn't have it yet. So they're like, "What is oh. this? We need it." <laughs> man, all right, maybe I have to go buy a battery powered hot glue gun. Let me let me find this on Amazon for you guys real quick. Because I get really excited talking about new tools. Um, if, <laughs> my my Amazon, uh, when they recommend me stuff, it's all crazy. It's all Dremel bits, contact cement, uh, gelatin, and pliers. That's Those are all the things that I totally need, Amazon. <laughs> I bet that's, I bet most of the people watching right now have a pretty wacky uh, Amazon recommended list. Uh, battery, powered, hot glue gun i've just sent a link to the chat the skype chat awesome uh let me see here there are a bunch of battery powered ones here we go yeah there's the ryobi one uh on amazon looks like uh there's a couple of options but that looks really good it's an 18 volts a uh, hot glue mm-hmm. gun very well uh well reviewed. I'm gonna add that to my wish list right now. <laughs> awesome. All right, cool. Thank you, Corium Nine. Oh, the other thing, Corium Nine always asks if if you have a hidden talent. So a, a talent outside of let's say prop making that uh, people might not know about. I'm pretty open with all of my talents. Yeah. You mentioned woodworking, <laughs> got- though. Yes. I love it. What type it's of so what, what type of woodworking uh, are you? Do, do you make furniture or do you do carving? Yeah. Furniture. Yeah, it's furniture. I'm not. I don't do carving just yet. I've stabbed myself way too many times. <laughs> it's a trust thing. I'm building it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what is the most recent piece of furniture that you made? Um, I, mm, nah, none of my work friends would be working. I'm currently making a um, a baby change table for a friend of mine at work that's oh. pregnant. She's about to pop. So wow, very gotta cool. finish that soon. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I don't do a lot of woodworking myself, but I do watch a lot of woodworking videos on YouTube. Um, I'm always really interested in the order of operations because you mm. you have to do things in a specific order. Otherwise, it won't work. That's always really so fun. calming to watch. Yeah, because you can't fudge it later. You have to get it right. Not kind at of, all. Right, like kind of the first time you plan, yeah. and then you measure, and then you plan, and you measure, and then you do a cut, and then you. And if pause. it's not square, it's it's ruined. Yeah. <laughs> so then you pause. You sort of reevaluate what just went on there, and then you plan the next step. And then, so yeah, I like watching watching woodworking videos because they are very very calm and very methodical. Uh, awesome! Thanks, Corey M Nine, for all the great questions. Uh, Paige has a question. She's curious if you are planning on attending any conventions or traveling uh, in general to the United States. One day. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to pick Taking one. one if you have a, had to pick a convention to go to that you've heard about, which one would you be excited to go to? Dragon Con. Yeah, that's a good choice. It's a good I've choice. I've heard you talk about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have sold it pretty hard, haven't I? I thought about San Diego Comic Con, but it just sounds like too much of a, a mad rush yeah. when you're there. Yeah. Is that I, right? I think you'd have a lot more fun at, uh, at Dragon Con. And besides, if yeah. you go there... Then maybe Kishore will give you a cheeseburger. Yes, I love cheeseburgers. <laughs> Although he's pointing out in the chat that he hasn't been able to eat a hamburger or a cheeseburger since. <laughs> there were a lot of cheeseburgers. Um, yeah, dra uh, so Dragon Con this year is going to be awesome. I believe Paige is going to be there, which would be really cool, along with a lot of other really fun people. Uh, very cool. Hopefully, we will see you there one day. Uh, yes. or, or hopefully we'll make it down to uh, Australia. Thanks, Paige. Christy has a, co a question here. Christy, the honest cosplayer. Curious about materials. Do you have a favorite material to work with and why? Um, ooh, it'd have to be foam. Yeah. I, don't know, I love how oh, it's so versatile. Like, I tried Warbler with this one, but I... I hasn't kind of broken my love affair with foam <laughs> at all. I make so many mistakes. So timber woodworking is such a slow process for me because I make so many mistakes and mm -hmm. it takes me so long to get it square. But with foam, I can just, I can make a mistake and just patch it up later and yeah. it's fine. Yeah. It's so forgiving. It's a very forgiving material. Absolutely. Um, I will say, boy, if I could only pick one thing to use ever again, I do very much like foam, and I do have two books I wrote about foam, and I'm writing another book about foam, but I do really like my 3D printer. <laughs> hmm. But I'd probably still go with foam. <laughs> no I had a 3D printer like yeah. six or seven years ago, I think. It was, it was back when they first started coming out, mm -hmm. um, available to buy, like out-of-the-box 3D printers. Wow. And, yeah. That was nice while it lasted. <laughs> it didn't last. Um, yeah, I'll tell you what. If I had a tiny, a really tiny space and I could only pick a handful of materials and a very low budget, then absolutely I'd go with foam for sure. Um, but I am, I'm spoiled. There are, and <laughs> there are four 3D printers right there because I'm spoiled. I admit. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, Christy. Good question. Let's move on to another one. Zach was uh, curious about your Sophie. Wait, oh, Sophie Monk wore your yep. costume. Okay, I don't know who Sophie Monk is. Could you enlighten me while I? Do she's some... oh, she's a she's an Australian celebrity. Oh, um, she was recently on. What was she on? She was on The Bachelorette, I think it was. They did an Australian Bachelorette. 
and she was the star of it for a while. But she's been around in Australia for a long time. She started in Pop Stars, which is kind of like Australian Idol or American Idol. Um, got some success there, and she's just she's just been hanging around the media ever since. <laughs> she's so I did a quick uh, quick burp, search, and she's got your dry or your Skyrim armor. That's awesome. <laughs> she's also got blood all over her face. I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool they didn't tell me they were going to put blood all over it <laughs> no oh no uh, that's so cool I don't think I've had anyone actually no I do have I did have one famous person wear part of a costume once uh, we were at um, Silicon Valley Comic Con last year which unfortunately I will not be at this year but last year and they needed to get Adam Savage from one place to another. So they took my mechanist helmet and put it on him so that he would be hidden. Uh, and he almost fell down a flight of stairs because it's very hard to see out of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. So did they? how did that work then? Did they see your costume online and like just reach out to you and be like, hey, can we borrow that for a thing? Yeah, pretty much. They're like, we have an opportunity. Would you like to discuss it with us? And they wouldn't tell me anything until, until I said, yes, I'm in. Yeah. But, you know, it was from Bethesda. So I'm like, um, yes, I don't care what it is. You know, <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> so um, they gave me her measurements and everything. And she's, she's skinnier than me. But, you know, I made it work. <laughs> and they flew me up with my suit of armor and I put it on her and had to stuff a bit of fake fur where fake fur should not be stuffed. <laughs> it was a very intimate experience. Uh, Brit <laughs> Brittany is linked. Um, there was, oh, Elder Scrolls Online uh, video. We will, of course, link to this in the, uh, in the, oh, it's, oh my goodness, recommended for mature audiences. I will preview it. Up oh, there she is with her face covered in blood. That's cool. Did you do? Did you do the sword as well? Yeah, that's pretty neat. That's just duct tape to her back. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, but that but that's the softworks. Well, that is super cool, and I'm glad I, I know about that now. That's really awesome. Uh, Avatar is pointing out that the voice of Commander Shepard did wear my armor. Yes, Mark Muir, the voice of Commander Shepard, <gasps> wore my mass effect armor so yes that was really i think cool i time. remember that yeah he we were at the same convention and um i let him borrow it and he wore it while he was doing his signing which is pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> um awesome well we are getting to the end of our questions here um if anyone in the chat has any quick questions please feel free to post them um yeah so why don't you go for that uh Pop tarts. Give us a couple of quick questions in the chat. Uh, otherwise, um, I'm curious. So we asked if you would go to a, a convention in the United States, but do you have any events coming up uh, in Australia? We don't get a lot of conventions, but yeah, we've got one coming up in about a month, I think. Um, we've got Supernova. Oh yeah, in Melbourne coming up. That is definitely one I've heard uh, a whole bunch about. Uh, of course, I've never been there. Someday, someday I will be there. <laughs> you got to come down here for either Comic Con or PAX. Those are the two best ones. Yeah. Oh, PAX. Yeah, PAX Australia would be really awesome. Um, I haven't made it to last PAX was PAX East last year, so I haven't been to PAX in a little while. Do you have any plans on specific costumes you'll be wearing to Supernova? Um, I was going to recycle this guy here. Yep. Um, so that I could bring my axe. That's pretty much why I make my costumes, because yeah. I've made all these weapons and I need an excuse to bring them. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm going to make the armor this time. Um, I have to do a test fitting. It's been about a year or two since I've put it on. Mm -hmm. And I have gotten a little squishy around the sides. <laughs> so. <laughs> I know what that's like. See. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you have any other, do you know anyone else uh, in the area who will also have Skyrim outfits? Um, I actually don't have many people around me that are, and I've got a lot of convention friends that are either up in New South Wales and Canberra a um, couple in the Melbourne suburbs but I'm quite far away from Melbourne so actually no one really local to me no no all it's right. very sad well you'll be you'll <laughs> be representing the, uh, the 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 Skyrim contingent in Australia <laughs> <laughs> yes 
Um, cool. Let's see. Uh, Core Geek is here. He says it's perfectly reasonable to make costumes to go with your props. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Actually, he did that recently. He made the blaster from um, uh, Blade Runner, new Blade Runner movie. And then he was like, I guess I have to make the rest of the costume now. So. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if I must. Uh, let's see here. Um, Redbird props uh, page is curious if you know Wiru, W-I-R-R-U. I don't know who that is. I've heard, I've seen that name. I don't know what they do. Okay. I'll have to find it. Yeah. I, I, I imagine a, uh, a costumer and workshop presenter in Australia. Very cool. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Well, I, Tell you what, gang, I don't see a ton more questions coming in. I think we covered just about everything. So, bravo, everybody. And thank you very much for sending in your questions. Uh, and I think we are pretty well set. Um, oh, actually, we got one more here. This is, this, is a good, this is a good one to end it on. Uh, Closer is curious. How do you balance work with making costumes and playing games? The old Ugh. work-life balance question. My answer is poorly. <laughs> yeah, not well. Something has to be compromised. Like, I don't. I play video games in massive big chunks, and then I don't play them for about a month, and then in that time I'll be working on a costume. So I can't game and make costumes at the same time. It's one or the other for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it just fits and starts. Yes. So that's why I'm not making anything right now, because Far Cry's out, and it's amazing. Oh, man. Oh, you had to remind me. <laughs> I just got... I just started playing Sea of Thieves with my wife, and that's been really fun. So I haven't got Far Cry yet. But once I once I get sick of Sea of Thieves, I'm getting Far Cry 5, I think? It's got a few comfortable cosplay opportunities in there. Oh, yeah. I could dress up as a bear. That'd be pretty awesome. Yep. <laughs> yep. We, uh... <laughs> So we tend to do something similar. Um, I will go months without playing any video games. And then like a new one will come out that I'm excited about. And I will play the crap out of it. Like (laughs) Sea of Thieves. I'll play the crap out of it until I get sick of it. And then I go back to just working a lot. Uh, That's kind of just how we do it. (laughs) Have you jumped on the Fortnite bandwagon yet? Um, I tr- okay. I played Fortnite. I don't have the game. My friend had it, and he's like, "Hey, you should try Fortnite." And I played it for two nights in a row, and I got one kill. And that's <laughs> it. And then I was like, "I'm done. Never need to play again." I got my one kill. Um, but I used to play when I was a uh, younger man. I used to play Counter Strike uh, competitively, and I was okay at that game. And now that I'm older, I'm really bad at those go- those games, and my ego can't handle it. So mm. <laughs> well, that's what Twitch is for. You can watch other people play. That's it. right. <laughs> I can watch other people be good at video games. Uh, but no, mm-hmm. I, I think that's just about all the Fortnite I can handle. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, or or Jack says retire on top. I promise you, I was not on top. My kill to death ratio <laughs> was about one to twenty. <laughs> you tried. I did try. I did try, um, but uh, no, I'm done with Fortnite. <laughs> but sea of Thieves is really fun. I can just sail around the ocean, and when people come and try and kill me, I just sail away. <laughs> nope. Just throw all my treasure over the over the the railing and be like, "It's yours. I don't care. It's fine. You take it." <laughs> um. And then, okay, uh, to, to finish up and, and close everything out, uh, he's asking, what's your favorite video game of all time? Do I need to answer that? <laughs> um, Call of Duty. <laughs> totally. Oh, my God. So into Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> all the, the black ops. Yeah. The, what's it called? Gun something gun. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm making that up. <laughs> I did actually, I never played Skyrim as a spellcaster before, and a couple months ago I fired it up again just to try that out, and it was pretty fun. But mm. I, I rather have a sword and board, that's my favorite, Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a sword and flame. 
sword and flames? Yeah. So you have a sword in one hand and you shoot fire with the other hand? Pretty much. So you're the, a battle mage, which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, cool. Well, hey, everyone. Thanks so much for all the questions. You guys are awesome. You guys are what makes this show so cool, along with our wonderful guest, Steph, the Antilily. We'll have links to everything, uh, all of your social media stuff. But, uh, you know, if you go to, let's say, Instagram, uh, Instagram.com slash the underscore Antilily, you can go follow her over there. And you should because Steph's working on some really awesome stuff. I presume yeah. we will see photos from uh, Supernova, potentially. Yes. Yep. Very good. Another good reason to go to call, uh, follow <laughs> Steph. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us for the last hour. No worries. And almost an hour. Almost an hour. <laughs> and also, thank you for being so flexible with your schedule. <laughs> uh, that's all we have for you, gang. Um, I believe the next uh, Q&A will be in a couple of weeks. We're going do, do this again. So feel free to, to send in those questions anytime between now and then. Uh, that's all for today. And thanks so much for hanging out with the Prop Live Q&A. See you next time, everybody. <laughs>